Hello, my name is Diki Choyang. I'm the Interim Director for Indigenous Initiatives Unit. On behalf of our unit, including First Peoples House, I would like to welcome you to McGill's annual powwow. Uh, this year, like last year, unfortunately, we're unable to hold it in person, but we have uh, made great efforts to mark the occasion with a virtual powwow like last year. We've invited members of the community who usually perform to share some dances with us. This year also marks a very special anniversary. It will be the 20th McGill powwow and to mark this occasion we've decided to go down memory lane and invite members of the McGill community to share their thoughts and memories of the powwow and this includes Ellen Gabriel who organized the first powwow at McGill as well as uh, Dana Marie Williams who takes care of the logistics every year. So we hope you enjoyed this year's programming. Thank you. Uh, what can we do? Tana what can we do? Adi chitas kungaraui. Kachitsa kos ne yujats. Tana waga nyato. Kana sadaga na kana gera. Greetings, warm greetings to everybody. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Kachitsa kos Ellen Gabriel, and I'm from the Kanyakahaga community of Kana Sadaga, just uh, an hour north of Montreal. Uh, I I wanted to have a powwow at McGill University because there was nothing that reflected uh, Indigenous people. Um, who for centuries have lived on that island. And uh, my predecessor, Tracy Daibo, had, had tried to get one going had, and had some challenges. Students had also asked. So I searched high and low for funding and I wanted McGill uh, to really understand that indigenous students need to see things that reflect their identity uh, and so that they feel more welcomed in McGill University. So it was a bit of a challenge, um, and I wanted the students to feel at home as well. A lot of them traveled great distances, and to see something uh, that resembled or was, is part of their culture, I thought would help them uh, with their homesick and uh, just to feel more at ease in McGill University. Oh, I actually did it in, uh, I think, the first week of October. It was kind of like a day like today. It was a little bit cool, um, a little bit cooler maybe, uh, simply because the challenge of finding funding to inter you know, bring in dancers or a dance troupe at that time uh, was a bit difficult. And uh, you know, uh, the McCord Museum uh, came in um, in the last few weeks so I could confirm it and make the posters and tell the students. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get the field. That was uh, not allowed. Uh, but I had a small part uh, section past the Roddick Gates that had some dancers, some music. And uh, that was the first time I think McGill ever had uh, indigenous music and dancers in it. And, in, you know, since its existence. It took me a while to feel my way through McGill and, mm -hmm. and to, to try and convince um, the established at, at, at McGill that a powwow was something really, really important for, mm -hmm. for the people who, who work and, and uh, the students who study there. So I did get help, some, some, I got support from uh, the Dean of Students, especially the Assistant Dean of Students, Linda Starkey and uh, the chaplain, uh, Glenda, um, and McCord Museum um, helped finance the drummers and singers. Well, the powwow, the first powwow was, was um, it was interesting because whoever was walking by would, would, would hear the, the songs and dances. And uh, some, some of the faculty, like the dean of students, assistant dean of students, uh, really liked it. You know, and so they said, okay, let, yeah, for sure, let's do it next year. So it was, it was nice that the first one, even though it was really simple, uh, that it caught people's attention and that really, and they really enjoyed it and wanted to see more uh, of, of it. And so it was, I'm glad that it's still going 20 years later. Great. My name is Don Barnaby. I'm First Nation in Mi'kmaq from Listovic, Quebec. I'd like to begin by giving a land acknowledgement the unceded Mohawk territory in which McGill University um, sits on. We are the caretakers of the land and of the water, and we are guests. This year, unfortunately, we weren't able to come together um, for powwow. 
person and um, with the drums and our songs and our dances. But he said we asked other dancers to come together and to uh, to exhibit some of their dance styles and, and acknowledge uh, the Red Tail Spirit Singers for all their beautiful uh, contributions they've, they've given us over the years with their powerful music. The dancers come together from all over and they share their various dance styles. It's been a hard time for us. For the last two years, we haven't been able to come together for live powwow, for live gatherings. And uh, instead, we've had to do everything using technology as Zoom or making the phone calls. We try to uh, be in touch with each other. We miss that personal human contact. But at McGill, we're trying to uh, have the people still come together in celebration of song and dance and be able to provide um, everyone out there um, that we are still here, that we're doing well. And uh, we want to be able to still share our songs and to be able to share our dances. And we wish everybody to be safe. And please take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, watch over your elders, watch over your children, watch over your, each other. You know, we come together in, in, uh, in love and harmony and peace. And um, this year, um, unfortunately, we have to do uh, a virtual exhibition to, um, to come together. But, you know, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. We ask you for your continued prayers and continued support of each other. You know, continue to sing those songs. Continue to dance your style. You know, because our prayers go up with those songs and go up with that. When we dance, we pray. So we ask our dancers out there uh, to take the time. So even if it's in your backyard or even if it's in your living room, um, to continue to dance. Continue to feed your spirit. This is what we um, do and this is why we do it. You know, we pray for the people and we dance for the people and we sing for the people. So we want to thank you for joining us um, for this virtual exhibition. And we hope that you continue to um, follow uh, McGill University Powwow. We're shooting for next year that we'll come together in live and in person and be able to sing and be able to dance for those that are out there. Take care and have a safe year. I'm sitting over my In my view, point of view, I think that the Indigenous Awareness Week should start with a powwow. 
so that people get that energized. They dance, they hear the songs, and then they hear the, the voices later on and in, in when they become aware mm -hmm. of, of the issues and realities of indigenous people. So that there's something positive that starts it, but you also need something positive to end it. And uh, I don't know if that's there yet, um, but uh, I, th I think it's I think it's great that McGill is doing it. And um, I always, you know, when I worked at First People's House, uh, I did my best to try and support the students who were attending McGill and make them feel at home that they had a home away from home, mm -hmm. a safe place to be who they were, uh, and and not as an an object of curiosity, which you know I think sometimes we feel like that because we've been so researched to death. Mm -hmm. um, but it was uh, it took a while. It it took a lot of work um, because you know the change the way Indigenous people want to see change in these institutions, uh, it has to come with education and dialogue and discussion, and sometimes that change is not welcomed readily um, by certain people in the institution. So, uh, you know, if you put it in the way that it's about recruiting Indigenous students, uh, that helps. But for me, it's like you're on Indigenous land, so uh, you need to, to do some reconciliation and reparations and the students are the, the, the primary most important thing at McGill uh, to make them feel safe and to make them feel welcome in, in a world that um, uh, too many times and too often makes them probably feel like they're not important. So uh, it's, it's impo I, I think it's great that McGill is doing this. It's the only time of year that the students actually see and hear something that represents their identity. So, hello, my name is Anika. Uh, I'm an Enoch student here at McGill in my undergrad, um, where I study political science and anthropology. I'm originally from Ottawa. I was born and raised there, but my family comes from Paniktu Nunavut, uh, commonly known as Pangertang or Pang. My memories, let's go back to my first year. I'm now in my fifth year. But uh, my first memories of the powwow were as an observer. Like I said, in my first year, I didn't really know much about the Indigenous community at McGill. And I came out to the powwow with some non-Indigenous friends and we just tried to take it all in. Um, it was really a moment that stays with me, that is special to me. Uh, because it kind of signified my introduction to the really beautiful, vibrant community here at McGill. Uh, other than that, I remember throat singing with my birth sister uh, at the, in my third year at the McGill powwow. And uh, that was a really special moment where I felt really surrounded by the community I had formed in the past uh, two, three years. And uh, I felt very supported in in who I am um, and that was a, a really beautiful moment to have at McGill. To me having the powwow on McGill campus represents taking up space um, at the university with who we are, with our beautiful strong cultures. Um, to me it means that we can come to McGill, we can be a part of McGill and not lose who we are, that it doesn't have to be a constant negotiation, that um, we can even become strengthened in our cultures at, uh, at a colonial institution. And um, again, that speaks to the resilience of who we are as Indigenous peoples and that blood memory um, that we pass on to our future generations, that we persevere, that we thrive, um, no matter the circumstance. And um, I think it also means to me just um, community, um, that we build community anywhere. And here we are at McGill, uh, taking up space, sending a message that's loud and proud to the wider community that we're here, uh, we're at McGill, we are scholars, we are um, supporters of one another, we are proud of who we are and we'll always be here. My name is Don Barnaby. I'm First Nation Mi'kmaq from Listigush, Quebec. Uh, my 
traditional name is Etkwarga Kobit, and my English name is Don. I'm a, what they call a Southern traditional dancer. This is the style I'll be dancing. Uh, when powwows originated down in the South, uh, the very first uh, regalia that was used for powwows was uh, what they call a Southern straight. And uh, so to honor uh, all traditional dances, uh, I, I chose to, uh, to dance, uh, pick up the Southern style. And uh, you won't see it around up here up north. Uh, it's mostly uh, based out of uh, Oklahoma with the Osage and the uh, and, uh, different nations down there. I'm, uh, I'm honored to be here. And uh, for McGill, I've been dancing at McGill now for the past seven years. And um, it's always a great turnout. I really miss um, dancing um, under the tent, uh, dancing in the field. When it was just a field, uh, the tent was a big help. I really uh, admire and uh, respect all the hard work that the students uh, have been doing at McGill, um, not just in the studies, but also to uh, bring awareness and uh, to support the indigenous peoples. So um, I want to be able to uh, say Lalin, thank you. And, uh, and I want to share uh, a couple of songs uh, to you, uh, a couple of inner tribals brought to you by the uh, Red Tail Spirit Singers. They're the host drum every year, and um, they put on a, you know, they give us some good tunes, some really good jams to dance to. And um, so with that, I'm gonna put on some music and I hope you enjoy.
my name is Vanessa. I'm Anishinaabe from Beaver House First Nation, uh, and I'm currently a admin coordinator at McGill University. Uh, for me, McGill Pow Wow is a really special time because at the beginning of each semester, I'm able to meet and talk with uh, some of the new Indigenous students on campus, as well as get to catch up with students I don't necessarily see uh, due to being in a different faculty or department. Um, so going to Pow Wow and being able to celebrate uh, being Indigenous, celebrating um, and taking up a space on campus is really uh, important to me. I think the first powwow back from the pandemic is going to be really special because it gives us a spot to kind of have a large gathering again, to be able to feast together. Given that we haven't seen each other in so long, I think in the coming powwow it's going to be a really special moment for us to gather again. Christina is my English name. This is... My name is Emma Magic Jinka Dress Dancing. And today we are doing Sidestep and Jingle by Red Tail Singers. So today we're dancing for healing and for those that can't dance anymore.
Uh, I think it's absolutely necessary uh, within the spirit of reconciliation, within the spirit of acknowledging, you know, the historical injustices that have, have continued and you know, have been happening to indigenous peoples that uh, the youth or the students who attend McGill University feel welcomed. Uh, you know, there's lots of land acknowledgements and they don't mean anything unless there is some sort of gesture by these institutions to say, yeah, indigenous students matter. In indigenous students are important uh, to the fabric of McGill University and the quality of education that it has. Uh, it has to go beyond just uh, the land acknowledgements. It needs to actually put action into it. And so the powwow is one small uh, gesture for the university to support and make Indigenous students feel welcome at the university. Uh, some of the dances uh, include uh, like an honor song or intertribal that includes, you know, everybody. Um, but I think this year, be, particularly because, because it's a pandemic and because, you know, we've known for for decades of the children who never returned home from Indian residential school who were, who were killed in Indian residential school and finding the, the unmarked graves, I think, is going to means something special, uh, you know, in the national uh, a day to recognize those children who never came home and, you know, those children who could have been the leaders, could have been uh, artists, musicians. Uh, so we, we need to grieve those losses and I think it's really important that we do those songs and dance uh, in their honor uh, because they never got to. Uh, and so, uh, for people who don't know what our songs and dances are about, uh, it, it ranges from, you know, dancing for when the strawberry is ripe, or when the corn is ripe, uh, or we're dancing for our ancestors, and we're dancing for the recognition of the environment and Mother Earth. It, there's a, a whole, a wide variety. Uh, but for people to know that these are ancient, these were passed on and they survived colonialism. And I think that's that's another win for us to know that those songs and dances are there for us and and that we are continuing that and the youth are interested in that. So uh, I think things are changing. Well, to me, a powwow is 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 the way that our you know our our ancestors thought of it as as a time to exchange songs. Like we have an alligator song. I mean, there's no alligators here, so we know that they were exchanging songs. They were exchanging. Uh, things in their culture, whether it was arts and crafts, you know, pottery, uh, whatever, and, and the politics, that spiritual and, and political side of our people were there in a, in a traditional gathering. And uh, powwows nowadays, it's, you know, it's time to see new friends and old friends and um, uh, just remember to enjoy life. Really, that's, that's what that powwow is. It's, it's about living and moving and, and being part of, of the environment and, and Mother Earth that um, I think we forget a lot of time because we sit in front of a computer. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's sacred all around when you consider uh, what a powwow gives to people who attend it and participate in it. Yes, um, hi, my name is Terry Young and I'm the Indigenous Student Advisor for First People's House here at McGill University. And I'm here today because I've been asked to, to, I guess, share a little bit of my own experiences with the McGill Pow Wow. Well, I think for me, the, the biggest memory of the Pow Wow is, um, I actually met my now husband here at the Pow Wow. So we met, so actually probably not far from where I'm standing right now, I had a booth set up for uh, one of my previous jobs way back in 2006. So um, we met on the day of the powwow, so actually September 21st was the day we met, and uh, that was the day that we planned years later, um, about eight years ago actually, to get married on that same day. So um, I brought my now husband here to campus and back over on the other field over here and proposed to him there as well. I knew that the year before um, that we got married that I really had to bring him back here, um, but you know, so I think that's one of my biggest memories is, is me coming here and, and meeting him.
Well, I've been involved just from last year and this year because I started as the Indigenous Student Advisor last uh, summer. So I was able to work virtually, of course, with uh, my colleague and, and my now uh, director, Thomasina. And we planned last year's virtual powwow not far from here again, just actually right beside us here to, um, we had camera set up, we had the dancers here, we had a great drum group, we had a lot of uh, extra dancers because the thing was last year there was no students here so there was a little bit more room but if you see now today the place is full of students and so we've decided to go virtual again because of the the current situation that we're in and so my role has been to help with just assisting and, and planning out some of the events that, that you're going to see today. Well I, I think that because of pandemic it's really brought us to a point where people are desperate and, and actually missing people and I think so next year my hope is that we can all get together and and have some some good food have some great dancing have some uh, different indigenous people coming together and sharing their knowledge and their um, their own culture with all of us here for for next year's powwow. Well, I think having a, a powwow here specifically allows us to, to celebrate the diversity, the amounts of different Indigenous people that are actually part of the McGill uh, greater population of students. And it gives us that um, opportunity to share with each other our different cultures, our different languages, our different songs, our dances, our different traditions. And it's, and it's a really good opportunity, I think, for non-Indigenous people to come and learn and to, to hear our music and to hear our words and to know that we're still here and know that that as indigenous people we are still very much here and we're still very much a part of society and a, a very important part of society so I think that having it here um, is really a, a, a powerful tool to share that information with everyone.
Dunche, Matthew Dishanakashun, Michifnia. Hello, my name is Matthew. I'm Metis. I'm originally from British Columbia. I think the most important memory for me from the McGill powwow was actually the first time I ever came to McGill. The first event I ever attended was the McGill powwow, and that's where I met a lot of the staff and students who attend First People's House who would go on to become some of my closest friends uh, throughout my whole degree and even better, post my degree. So I've made friendships that have lasted for years and years and it means a lot to me. And that's probably the most important thing about the Pow Wow is a great chance to meet people from my community and forge, hopefully, lifelong friendships. I would like to see for the Pow Wow, once the pandemic is over and we're able to gather again, I would like to see it come back in full force, bigger and better than it has been. And I'd like to see 20 more years of the powwow. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see it continue to prosper.
Hi everyone, my name is Paige. I'm Migma from Lustigooch and excited to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the powwow. Has me going down memory lane. I just remember the the energy at the beginning of the year. You know, the powwow was the first big event on campus to welcome students and yeah, just really re remembering the, the energy, the buzz on campus and excited to welcome a bunch of people on campus. So the indigenous community on campus, all the new students returning back. Um, yeah, I think it was always just like a really exciting time of the year um, to make new friends and see old friends and, and celebrate indigenous culture on campus. Um, so I was involved in the powwow from when I started working at the First People's House. So probably as a student too, actually, I would I would help out and volunteer. And when I came on board as the Indigenous Outreach Coordinator, I brought in high school students to campus. And I don't know, we did like obstacle courses and played lacrosse and had a little education day on campus for students and so that's kind of how I started to get involved. So I was partnering with the powwow and and offering outreach uh, events to the community and then when I became the associate director of the First People's House was, you know, was organizing organizing it along with the team obviously. <laughs> um and uh yeah, that's how I got involved in the powwow. Um, so, you know, I'm sure this year, obviously, it's quite different. So I definitely hope, you know, future powwows can, you know, we're able to gather again because that was the, that was it. That was the powwow, was a gathering. And so, you know, definitely missing, I'm sure you're all, you're all missing that. Um, but, um, you know, so post pandemic i hope the next powwow goes off with a bang and you get a lot of people out and it's safe to do so and and just bring that energy back on campus really you know i think it it meant a lot to everyone to have a powwow on campus it was creating that welcoming space it was um you know a really cool introduction to some people because a lot of people didn't know about indigenous culture weren't you know i think it really made a statement to start off the year that way to be like wow you know we have a really really unique diverse culture here on campus and and we're gonna honor the first peoples of of the land by by celebrating the powwow and and honoring culture and language and and you know through song and dance and and meeting people so you know i think it really meant a lot my name's dana marie williams i'm the admin coordinator at the first people's house and i've been coordinating the powwow for the past eight or nine years and i'm micmac from listigooch quebec and potawatomi from moose deer point my memories of organizing the powwow i've been doing it for about eight, nine years now uh, since I've started at McGill. Uh, they've always been hectic. I do it every summer. So it, for me, it marks the end of summer. So the first powwow post pandemic when we could gather again um, will be very strange because everyone's waiting to gather. Uh, everyone's waiting for that first powwow, um, wherever it is. I know I've been waiting for it. Um, but I know for uh, future Miguel Powell's, I want it to get bigger. And I know other people want it to get bigger. They want bigger space to dance, bigger, more, 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 more vendors, uh, more performers. So yeah, so that's definitely something I'm looking forward to.
I'm Gwendolyn Owens. I'm director of McGill's Visual Arts Collection, which is all the art across all the McGill campuses. What stands out for me about the powwow was hearing something completely different on the campus. Suddenly there was a different kind of music, a different kind of noise that was drawing me in from my office to go see this amazing thing happening. Having a powwow on this campus means that not only for the indigenous presence here, but it also means for the non-indigenous people like me, a recognition of this amazing heritage. Once we can gather again, I think many more people will want to come to the powwow. There's been such an interest, such a growth in our knowledge about our indigenous heritage of this land that I expect to see a lot more people at the next powwow. Kwekakina, Carol Brazo and the Dijna cause. So my name is Carol Brazo. I'm uh, Anishinaabe Algonquin, and I'm the program manager with the Indigenous Initiatives since uh, of March of this year. And uh, it is my honor and privilege to organize uh, for the first time the uh, McGill powwow. Kichimigwech, and congratulations on your accomplishment to Ellen Gabriel for starting this powwow on the McGill campus. You know, it's been running strong for the past uh, 20 years and, you know, just of late that we've had to hold it uh, virtually because of the pandemic. So that's always uh, a challenge to, uh, for any, uh, for well, for many of us, there's many challenges, but, um, you know, it's always a, a time for us to gather. So I do have some, uh, some really nice memories of coming to the McGill Pow Wow, as I always held uh, kiosks here. So it was always a time to see family and friends and, and colleagues. And um, even uh, my uh, granddaughter, Chelsea, uh, danced at the McGill Pow Wow. And um, I'm just, I'm always happy. Uh, you know, we're really lucky uh, to, because uh, this is uh, a nice time of year because it's one of the months with a uh, few days of rain so uh, we've been we've been fortunate that way to have always uh, lovely weather uh, for the, for the powwow and it's uh, you know it's a good time for uh, the McGill community to know about the culture indigenous people's cultures or uh, hear about our sacred songs and dances and it's it's there we have our drum which of course is the heartbeat of our mother earth and so it is a special time for for everyone to gather and uh, see each other once again. Hi everyone, my name is Darshan Sanjidarnani and I'm serving as the president of the Student Society of McGill University. On this 20th anniversary of the McGill Pow Wow, I'd like to thank everyone who founded this day at McGill for us to come together and celebrate the resilience and diversity of our communities here on campus. And I hope that in the future we can meet in person to re-engage and celebrate, sing, dance and do a lot more together. Four years ago, as an international student, when I first arrived on campus, I was right here on this lower field and I stumbled upon an amazing festival where Everyone was dancing, singing, and just, you know, making fun of the diverse culture that we have on campus. I hope we can do that again. On this 20th anniversary of the Pow Wow celebrations, I'd like to thank the First People's House, the Indigenous Initiatives, for bringing us together once again virtually. And although this year it may be virtual, I hope we can bring out the same engagement that we have in the past years and to do it bigger and better.
way, this is Don Marnie again. I want to thank you all for being with us today and for checking out our different dances, listening to our songs, and listening to our words. This has been a rough time uh, presently, but uh, we know we're going to get through this. And uh, we want to thank everyone for being here. And we want to thank you for, um, thank McGill University for allowing us to continue to have uh, uh, powwows in our gatherings, what we call in Mi'kmaq or Maui Omis, and, um, and, and knowing that they support uh, the indigenous people uh, through education, through experience, and also to um, be able to encourage us to continue to keep doing what we're doing. Um, thank you for all our native students for um, continuing to carry that message and uh, that we're still here and also that we will come together again. So please continue to have hope, but please continue to be safe out there because during this pandemic, it has affected so many people, you know, and this uh, pandemic is not prejudiced. It doesn't care whether you're red, white, black, or yellow, man, woman, a child, elder. Um, continue to please um, protect yourselves and to watch over each other and give each other the love and compassion until we see, see each other again next year you know um, I look forward to coming together next year with everybody um, please take care please stay safe on behalf of, of Indian country we thank you for being here today I'm sitting over my, all my relations okay so happy 20th anniversary of the McGill powwow to all the participants, all the dancers, performers, singers, vendors, and I think most importantly to the organizers who've um, built such a beautiful tradition at McGill through the powwow. And uh, I wanna thank um, those to come, the students that will be a part of the 50th anniversary, the 100th um, in, in this beautiful tradition. Congratulations to Miguel for having 20 years of powwows, uh, and I hope that we can have even more to come. You know, congratulations on, on 20 years to the, the people who started this 20 years ago and the people that planned the powwows for all the last few years and including last year's and, and this year's virtual powwow. I think that um, I'd like to see it a little bit bigger. I'd like to see it a little bit more um, extravagant every year and uh, maybe next year we'll be able to do that when we get together. Well first of all I say congratulations and thank you to everyone who came before me and made the powwow in the first place from the first one all the way to the 20th. There's a lot of behind the scenes that goes into that so a lot of gratitude to the people who have been doing that and continue to do that. I'm really ecstatic that it kept going 20 years wow that's so exciting I want to congratulate everyone involved all the organizers I know it's a lot of work um, and I hope everyone can enjoy this video that is being made that's really exciting thanks for uh, asking me to be a part of it. Um, I just want to wish you a awesome, fabulous 20th anniversary. You did it. Well, thank you everyone. I wish the Powwow a happy 20th anniversary and I hope that there's many more to come. My happy 20th anniversary wishes uh, to the powwow are I'm so glad it's at least happening virtually and I can't wait to be there again and I feel like I have learned so much from every year's powwow. This is especially this year is a special celebration the 20th anniversary and I want to wish us a happy 20th uh, powwow at McGill University. Miigwech. Happy powwow, everyone. Congratulations uh, to all the people who are making it possible to have 20 years uh, of, a, of a powwow at McGill University and to McGill University as well um, for, for being open uh, and supporting the efforts of the indigenous staff and faculty and uh, students who are there um, on, you know, on their on indigenous land studying. I think it's marvelous. I wish that 
as long as McGill University exists, that up there will always be a powwow in September to, to raise up, to lift up indigenous students, their languages, their culture, and their identity. Hello.